right now. Things are moving. Things are peachy mostly. I am actually in the process of updating my uh, bags. And that is a process in itself. And what one thing that I did tell myself that I was going to do is going to order coffee off Amazon and also get a locally roasted coffee. Um, most um, mainly to see what it does have on the back of the bag. Sometimes a lot of these coffee companies, they don't show you the back of the bag. And that's majority where most of my information is going to be. And I need to make sure that I do follow state of Texas uh, protocol. And since they already have bags and that's, <laughs> and they're already legit and everything, then they should be following the protocol. And yeah, I do have a couple different links from the state of Texas of what needs to be on there. But I think spending 15 bucks for a bag of coffee in analyzing the bag as much as I want to or need to and getting the information I need, then that'll be a lot easier and faster of what I can and cannot put on there. And we go from there. But I went ahead and ordered a Amazon Fresh coffee bag. This coffee is like $14, two pounds. It is a direct competition to mine. Um, the one that I did order is a medium roast. It's a Colombian. And I had one cup of it. <laughs> I was actually trying to get some more cups of it with my wife. But it did not really happen. It was, she didn't want it anymore. And I purposely made sure to, uh, to uh, not tell her immediately. But then after she drank some of it, I asked her opinion. And the thing about it is that I know what Colombians are. A lot of Colombians, especially a uh, lower grade, even though it is a specialty coffee, they have a very similar type of taste. It does have like a more so like a red fruit, probably finishes more so with that soft acidity. But that red fruit is pronounced. It's there, strawberries or cherries. And then it kind of just goes flat after that. And then what people may say is that they may taste like a chocolate muted. I call it more of a muted type of taste personally. And I think that's what a lot, a lot of people say about it, it being a uh, chocolate taste. And it does work with majority of what people like and go for. It actually gives the person who is a, uh, a black, black coffee drinker more of an, an option compared to a Brazilian because the Brazilian is mostly like a chocolatey nutty note. And those actually present a lot better, at least in my case, as a uh, doctored beverage or one that has milk on it, you know, or a creamer. But the uh, usually a lot of times if it's like a Colombian, they do have a little bit more fruity type of taste to them compared to a Brazilian type of coffee. So it's there, but I'll tell you more about my situation. So that's that's what I was thinking and hoping and thinking that that was going to be more so what it was going to be. Let me bring it up real quick. I keep, I put the coffee, I put the actual coffee in the garage. I may give it to somebody because <laughs> I don't, I'm not drinking it anymore. You know, and there's no need to drink it. I'll just give it out to somebody and whatnot, and we will go from there. But it is uh, pulling it up now. Okay. It's Amazon Fresh Colombian Whole Bean Coffee Medium Roast. Remember that, okay? Um, the notes that it says on it is well-balanced and smooth. Um, the bags that I have, the way, actually one of my biggest things in my approach to coffee is having it to be balanced and very flavorful. Pretty much presenting the coffee in the best light as possible as a medium roast and also as a dark roast, depending on the situation. And uh, yeah, so their 
coffee notes, as they say, is well balanced and smooth. And it's a medium roast. And I can go back and forth. We may talk about this later on. But a lot of times when somebody says a medium roast, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Um, I consider a medium roast to be a coffee that is right at the verge at the end of first crack. What usually happens when you roast a coffee is that you roast it right. And then after many minutes later, usually I like the, uh, there's a guy that I usually follow that I got some roasting techniques and tips from is that it's usually just two phases. It's before first crack and after first crack. So what happens is the coffee is, is green and then it gets brown and then it goes through a Maillard reaction where it starts to, you know, it goes through, it gets brown and through that phase, it gets through a Maillard reaction and then it pops. And what it's doing is like releasing moisture. I don't want to get too crazy with the technicality of what's really going on. That's really hard to decipher. And I don't want to be a repeating monkey, <laughs> so to speak. And like people saying these things like sugars and this and that, and they don't really know what they're talking about. That's a little bit on my soapbox, actually. Uh, when normal <laughs> human beings that don't really have that expertise in the scientific nature of things and how things actually work, they just keep regurgitating what they hear from other people. And uh, a lot of times it's like, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. It's just saying what other people are saying and you don't really know what's going on. But anyway, that's just me being having that engineer mindset and really just trying to test and try things out. And that's where I get most of my mythology and, and way of going about it and tasting it and going from there. But uh, yeah, so it has two phases. One phase is the uh, before first crack and one is after first crack. And then usually when a coffee goes through first crack, there is a time in between first crack and second crack where nothing happens. Like all the coffee is completely, all of them are completely uh, popped, cracked. They, they have expanded. Uh, some people pull them right when first crack happens. Some people pull them like in between first crack happening. Sometimes it just depends on when they pull it. Sometimes they base their dropping the beans more so with a temperature base depending on how they brought that coffee along. Sometimes you can roast the coffee fast, slower, and whatnot. And usually during that first and second phase, there's a time period. And if you're still like on the on the fire, on the heat quite a bit, that phase can be shorter or longer depending on how much you're trying to actually get it to the stage that you're trying to get it to. But usually there is a phase where it's, it's quiet. You don't hear any more popping into the coffee. And that's really where, where the medium roast happens. And again, that varies and changes depending on how fast you actually roast the coffee or how slowly you do it. You know, sometimes if you go too slow, you can bake the coffee to where you do taste it in the cup. I don't think it's as crazy dramatic as people say it is, but it does give it more of a flat, dull type of taste. Um, but again, it, it, you just have to kind of play around with that for different coffees at different times of the years that you do have that coffee if you have it too long. Um, but again, that's usually what happens. And the medium phase is in between the quiet. You know, that's when so to speak, the coffee is mostly fully developed. If you go beyond that, that's where if you wait long enough, that's when second crack happens. That's when it sounds like Rice Krispie treats and stuff like that. And and it kind of goes and it goes a lot faster and the coffee is getting a lot darker and darker on the outside and also on the inside. And then it also creates forms uh, 
Oreos on the coffee. You can actually see that. So the reason why I bring all this stuff up is because the thing about the coffee in general is that it's extremely subjective beverage, like as many beverages as are. Water, a lot of times, water tastes like water. But when you start getting into the details, especially with different coffees, um, different wines, different drinks, people have a different way of understanding, interpreting what they really taste. And again, you're dealing with people, so they have different palates and all that stuff. So I, I guess what I'm getting at really is that when somebody says something is a medium, it's you, you have to first take them at what they mean by that. And then, of course, you have to drink the coffee. And then you have to think or think about what you think is a medium for the most part. Then you go from there. I like medium roasted coffees because they're balanced. They really are balanced. A lot of times, light roast, they are vegetable. They have that high acidity on them. And they tend to spike and then die depending on the temperature that you actually brew it at. But depending on the coffee, it can work sometimes. But a lot of times it does work with a high acidity type of coffee, but you can really get in trouble with it being too acidic. And when you're dealing with people, majority of people, depending on your audience, your customer base, I like to stay in the balance area to where it's acidic, but it's not overpowering. You do taste the juiciness of the coffee, but it's not, you know, you do taste more so different elements of the coffee. And it's and you're more able to actually decipher different tastes in the coffee. You know, it's like meeting a person for the first time. A lot of times they're going to be cagey at first. And then eventually they will open up to you and... Hopefully, you do get to see most of their personalities as you go on with that conversation. But a lot of times, it takes time for somebody to truly, really open up to you. But uh, yeah, that's the case. So again, the reason why I bring all this up is because a coffee level is subjective. And it shouldn't... Okay. What somebody tastes as a as a roasted level is is subjective, but that actual coffee at a light, medium, and dark shouldn't be subjective. Meaning that if that coffee is truly a light roast, it has those characteristics. Meaning that it does have that light body or that medium body or that dark syrupy body but also in the, the roast degree of that coffee you know and that's one of the biggest indicators that you know majority of people go by especially in the coffee industry and I do have gear that helps me out to understand that even more beyond just what I see and a lot of times I'm looking at coffee and I can kind of decipher what it is and then I taste it and I can go from there. And what I'm understanding about this coffee in particular, when I first drank it, was like, this is not a medium roast. You know? But before that, I did put it through the roast right. You know, I do have that gear in order to do that. So I did that. I think it came out to a whole bean reading of like 52. And 52 usually is a dark roast. And then I grinded the coffee up. And then it was like a 52 again, too. So that means also that you can kind of tell how theoretically how that coffee was roasted. So it seemed like it was a good paste coffee. But a lot of times, truthfully, if you're roasting a lot darker, it's easier to get that coffee to be more so 
what the internal and uh, exterior of the coffee to be because you're roasting a lot darker. It's a lot harder for a lighter roast to actually get it to be in the realms of a outer bean and internal bean to be the same type of roast degree, you know? And again, it depends on the coffee. Sometimes you can have those different variations in the coffees, then that's kind of like where you're at with things. And you have to test it, um, test how fast you're moving that coffee. Some people use uh, software. I use uh, different guides of paper. I mean, not paper. Yeah, I use paper, but I I have different characteristics of like, okay, at two or three minute mark, where am I at? Okay, if I'm there in the next minute, I need to be either close to there or around there. So I use more so of a gauge to get me to where I need to. And it works for me. And I think it makes me more repeatable in my process. Everybody has their own way of going about it. As long as it's replicable, you know. But that's the thing about coffee in general. Like, I just tasted this batch. Let's say a couple of months down the road, I try it again. And hopefully it is close to what it says it is, you know, but that is really dependent on who's roasting that day, you know, and that's the thing about it too. Who's roasting that day? What criteria do they follow? Is it as strict as they need it to be? Um, How long have the beans been sitting? What's their like pre-roast? post roast protocol have they had a fight with their partner <laughs> the next day that does affect if that coffee is going to be roasted in a in a correct manner and you know if the, their boss pissed them off or whatnot or if they just barely just started learning how to roast and this is their first batch that they're doing that all affects it you know you're dealing with a human being and As much as we like to make sure that we repeat things, as long as we are constantly challenging ourselves and getting better, that's where we're at with a lot of this stuff. And that's the same thing with coffee. It's like with food. A lot of times people think, oh, I want a repeatable type of product. And things are always constantly changing. So, but, but again, this coffee in particular was, it was dark. It was not medium roast. It was not as tasty i did taste the fruit on it but then i tasted more so the bitterness of it and that could be more so it being roasted a lot longer so you'll get a lot more bitter taste in the coffee as it gets darker so the flavors were the flavors that not so much on the bag because those flavors on the bag were they really didn't say anything you know it wasn't really distinct to this coffee especially me knowing that a colombian has more of a red fruit forward type of cup and then a little bit of chocolate muted type of taste that's with that coffee so it it really wasn't there and of course yes the coffee did taste old too you know and that's the drawback of dealing with amazon or or any of these places where your coffee is going to be presented there and you roast the coffee, you submit it there and best try to stay with the whole bean part of it. But that's going to give you the the freshest type of coffee as possible. And a lot of times that's one thing that you kind of just have to like deal with and realize and go from there. But yeah, so it was very, I wouldn't say disappointing, disappointing. It was an eye opener. It's a good lesson. And if I had only had to spend fourteen dollars to try out this coffee and and get an understanding of what they're doing, then that's all that matters, really, you know. And that was the cool thing about all this. And I will continue to see what else needs to go on, what I need to do. But right now, it's a big eye opener of like, okay, this is what it is. But true, truthfully, though, I can't compete at fourteen dollars. I can't <laughs> fourteen dollars 
to, to give give you an idea is if I put my coffee on Amazon for fourteen dollars, everybody else gets paid but myself. So I'm gonna have to put this coffee closer to like twenty two to twenty five dollars, which is about thirteen dollars a pound. Which again is on Amazon. You may think that's high, but you're 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 paying for shipping. So. And that's one thing that people will realize eventually once I get it out there, uh, promote it, get it out to people, get it out to cafes and all that stuff. Things will happen in a way to where everybody will be more than appreciative of of the coffee and what it can do for them and in the ease of access, of especially dealing with Amazon, because that's what people feel safe with. No matter how safe and secure your site is, which mine is, that's the juggle. That's the issue that I have to go with. And I think this mythology will help, especially locally. And the cool thing is that when as I put it on Amazon and as I reach out to different people and as I put more videos, podcasts, uh, writing and all that good stuff, I think that will give me an edge over a lot of people in yeah, so that's what we're dealing with. That's the situation. And believe it or not, this is like, as of right now, October 15th, this is the longest <laughs> video or podcast that I've done. And that's pretty crazy. I never thought that I would do a essentially a 25-minute podcast by myself. But that's what it is. And We'll see if people like them or not, but it makes me feel better about just talking my thoughts out and then doing more video and then going from there and then writing too. So yeah, so I'm looking forward to the next thing and we will talk again soon.